your subconscious beliefs don't line up with your aspirations and desires, that's why you find it very difficult to achieve these things. Uh, you know, in my experience with social media and real estate, okay, so real estate is very hot topic. Obviously. Uh, it's pretty much our entire economy. It's one of the biggest parts of our GDP in, in our economy is real estate. Um, I think actually first we would finance, then insurance, and then real estate is, is how it kind of plays out on the list. Now, the noise we hear, you know, I've said this before, we, the negative Nellies are always the loudest ones, okay? Right. So we're always going to hear the negative ones. You know, you get, you do, uh, you know, TripAdvisor. You do, you have your your your, your business, and, yeah. and you do a perfect job. Like you had given that example of the six people versus the other two. You know, you do a perfect job. You have perfect weather. The conditions are awesome. They, everybody has a great time. Facilities work. Equipment works. But these people had a bad experience because maybe it was they got nauseous on the boat, or uh, they just weren't the type to do that, and they convinced themselves to go out and do it. And you get a bad review. You know, someone painting, you know, paints a car, leaves a handprint at the end. Mm -hmm. But not a permanent handprint, just a dirty handprint on a mirror. And that puts a bad review. Whereas you do the whole car perfectly or you have a great experience and maybe one person will comment. Right? right? So, uh, the noise. You know, how do you, what advice do you have to people? Um, and I'm sure you, you, you're on social media too. You see, you know, the market's crashing, the market's tanking. You know, interest rates are going to ruin everything. Or I'm going to wait to buy because it's going to crash. Yeah. Um, these things, first of all, we don't, they don't, they don't, they're not predictable. You know, it, it may crash, it may not. We don't know when it's going to happen. Um, but you know, what advice do you have to listen to the noise? You know, and, and I block it out. I just don't even go on it in yeah. order to eliminate from from my mind, right? Yeah, certainly. I think um, you know where you get your information and the sources you get your information from is important um, and I, I, I'm really a strong believer of listening to your intuition okay. and your gut feeling and being in a place where you're ready to make these decisions. Um, you certainly don't want to be in a not a good state of mind when you're trying to <laughs> make a big purchase like of real course. estate investment. But obviously this is something that you go over and you consider and you think about and you think about over and over. But essentially, try and get your you know credible information from your real estate. Agent I, I, I would say I would say don't anything that's um, pushed towards you maybe with some you know review it with some skepticism. Whereas if you're going out and finding information, would be a little bit better. Right, you. That's what I mean. So, so instead of it being pushed to you, exactly. People like telling if you're you. looking and you want to be like, okay, I'm, I'm ready. In fact, I'm in a position now. I'm ready to get into the real estate market and looking around for different things and um, I'm talking to people, I'm talking to people in the industry. You, know, you yourself, yeah, you said you were going to exactly. were looking to buy in Canada because the St. Kitts market is, uh, right. you know, that, that, that great. And, yeah, the, the St. Kitts market is not... Uh, it's a tourist market. It's, uh, yeah, like, you know, you don't get the appreciation value okay. that you do here the same way. Um, so I'm not interested in really purchasing something there. Um, for like a rental property or rental income. But yeah, like, you know, I'm, I'm talking to real estate agents here. I'm looking around, I'm checking out the prices. I'm seeing how it relates to my finances and how much I'm willing to put down. And, you know, again, I'm looking for more of an investment property that I can have renters and essentially- Generate income. Generate income, yeah. And at this point, from what I've viewed, um, I haven't found something that really said this stands out this is one and this is kind of what I said earlier about your intuition you know if it doesn't if you're not in the right place and, and it, it's not making sense to you I wouldn't just go on one person's information or something right. to make this kind of decision you really want to make sure that you, you research the area the best you can you found as much information and make sure it meets all your needs uh, and all the things that go into it because that's a lot you know if you're trying to rent who are you trying to run to? Do you need a school decided? Do you need to have close to certain amenities and, and stuff like that? How much down payment can you have? How much is the uh, carrying cost? Oh, yeah. Um, what if you don't have a renter for three months? Can you carry can you that cost carry, on your yeah. own? Uh, you know what I mean? So these are all things that individuals need to take into account when they're making these big decisions, uh, especially for real estate. 
and um, and again, you know, doing your own due diligence, and speaking to more than one person about real estate because people have different opinions. But you have to then gather that information, see what aligns with. If everyone's saying the same thing, then maybe there there's some truth to that. Or maybe they're all in the same spot. Or yeah, exactly. You know, maybe they're all in the same office, or maybe right. they're all in the same area. Well, yeah, it's good to obviously have a variety of different. No, but it's good that you that you touched on that. Uh, yeah. It's good that you touched on that. But even more important than the attributes of the investment are, because I'm talking to you now, is how you feel personally. Right. It's how you're set up personally. So you obviously feel confident about your position. Yeah. Uh, you know your stance. You know. Yeah. You know you, you, what savings you have, what money you have, and right. now you're looking for the attributes that accompany that savings and and that view of your endeavor. Exactly. Whereas you're not going out with no money and right. no vision and just rushing into something Certainly. to try to make money or borrowing too much to get into it. Right. Um, or taking on investors that you don't have to. Right. And, and, and that's, you know, uh, again, I, I'm all about, you know, trying to live in a, in a happy way and, and having And not have that stress. Imagine if you, you're taking this big leap and then, you know, nothing ever goes as planned. You know, there's always hiccups and things that you don't see, expenses that happen, maybe this, you have to start replacing some appliances, whatever the case may be. You need to take all that into account, make sure that you're in the, the place and that everything makes sense for you. And then have that feeling like, oh, I know this is the one, this is the place I'm gonna buy. This is, this makes sense to me. I've done my due diligence. I've checked with many people. I've researched the information. You're working with the right part, with the right people to help you get you there. Exactly. And then, and then you uh, go ahead and, and do that. So that's really that's good. the process I'm I'm doing now, and uh, what I'm having, uh, like experiencing. And uh, so far, so good. No, uh, to be honest, it's. Yeah. Um, I, I shouldn't say it's not good in, in that sense. No, it's not as expected. Okay. That's what I meant. By so what did you expect? So it is going good because I'm learning a lot. Um, I guess you, I expected is that, you know, the real estate has been going up for 30 years here. Yeah, you had a 25, 30 year run. Right. And uh, you think that continues and, and, you know, everybody, if they've been saying that in the past, you'd be like, well, it has been continuing. Uh, and it may still, but I, I, for my circumstances, the, I thought it would be easier. I'd have more options to look around that would meet my down payment and that I would be able to, the rent would cover or, you okay. know, and I'm finding that's not happening yet. And I've checked, I haven't done vast amounts of research, but I've been checking in specific areas, a few areas that are further north um, and have friends re telling me that, oh, this, I've done this here, it's been great. And okay, but maybe you bought five years ago or three years ago or whenever you did. But me looking now from the research I've done, it's not working out for me. Right. Uh, and uh, and you I've know, now been browsing and, and checking out uh, Florida as a place. That's gonna Florida's a decent place. Yeah, I've been hearing right. a lot of good things about Florida. So uh, I started checking out a different area because Florida, I'm close to from St. Kitts. There's direct flights that are closer than here for me. Um, and the, uh, what you're getting for your money is much further than, you know, you another thing, for, another thing to take into account too, though, is, is the areas you're looking and can you spread them even further? You know, like you look at the areas that you are looking at and you're talking to the people that you're most familiar with, right? So it's always right. the bias is that close group of, right. of stuff. And then to, we kind of say, well, I've been looking in our, in, you know, where I've been looking right. and I'm not finding it. But then we, we sometimes don't realize we can go a little further, of even course. out of our comfort zone or out right. of our norm, you know, instead of I half would, an hour away or 40 minutes away, it's two hours away. Yeah, so I guess from, it's not that I, I'm indifferent to any areas or if they're too far, but it's kind of like a convenience thing, right? If, uh, you know, my father's in Someone has to maintain it. Someone's gotta go there and I, I wouldn't wanna, if I was looking at places, yeah, and then, like, Real estate agent has there. My father has to drive, you know, four hours because he's got to fix a leak in that roof or something. No, but I think two hours is okay. Yeah, I think under two um, hours would be would be sufficient. Um, and the reason I bring that up is because there are communities. So, so when you, when you're looking for investments, um, you know, you, you're looking at obviously money. It's always cost, you know, uh, income and stuff like that. But 
one thing to take into account too is the community. It's it's how how these these uh, booms and busts get created, how they originate, okay? and they re originate with support from the community, support with legislation, support with municipalities. So so for example, a young community or an older community, but that's very small and is ready for expansion. Okay, so we're going to be talking about maybe Vaughn 20 years ago, before the condos were here, right? Yeah. So now they have the city who's taking on new, like the mayor saying, okay, now we want to grow up. Okay, yeah. so now we're going to open up new procedures, new permitting uh, to pump um, more, more volume of, right. of tax money and bring in more people into the community. So now that's a sign yeah. that you have support from local municipality, local government. Yeah. And then you have the banks now that they have to get on board to help these people get into properties. So if we could follow these attributes of how it gets to high prices or how it gets to becoming a good investment area, because you, you might be onto something or right and you say, I've been doing this for 30 years here in York Region or in Toronto or in GTA. Right. And we do know that it doesn't last forever can't predict when it won't last and when it will right but we do need to be cautious but at high point at the end of the day it's, it's, it's got to make sense it's got to make sense and, and you, again you know it's but when we sense. look at these these areas that i was just talking about to continue on on this is imagine being the first person to buy 20 years ago right. so this would be a location now okay and i'm i'm talk, pretty much talking about a place called simco yeah. Uh, which is Norfolk County. Okay, right. and it is two hours away. I've never even driven out there until I was working on the development. Yeah. And we had Naveen Chopra on the on the channel here too, and he shared a lot about it. But what was really cool when I started researching the area, okay, to uh, help educate people on on what to expect out there is this is the beginning of the first of years ago. Twenty years ago. <laughs> yeah. So we have sure. this one builder yeah. who's got four hundred homes planned. Yeah. But then where he's situated or where they are situated. Yeah. Uh, there's three other builders with signs coming. These are massive builders. Right. And we're talking hundreds yeah, yeah. of more lots or thousands. Right. So imagine getting in. Now, even if it's a high point across the board in Ontario, right. okay, this is still kind of a hedge. Yeah. It's still a protection because it's early. Right. Now, even if the prices do contract or things, they still got so much more growth ahead in the, right. in the next 20 to 30 years. So looking at these areas, are the beneficial? Absolutely. You know, are are, are the areas where you may get the yeah. most appreciation? When you start seeing those WalMarts and those big stores, and they're developing, and the schools and everything starting to go. That means when you, you start know, seeing the city pumping money into infrastructure and willing to put up more tax dollar and willing to open up, you know, more opportunity for people to come in, right. well, you have already the backing of of. You know they're permitting these properties right. they wouldn't be permitting them if they didn't and the builder wouldn't be investing in right. building yeah. if they didn't see a future there right. so this is kind of like a strategy for looking for good investments Absolutely. as people if we listen to the good all the time you know like uh, you know i had success in real estate a lot of people bought in the last 10 15 20 years had great success in real estate right. okay yeah. some of it even to a degree where it's absurd okay but still that's the way the market works. That's the way yeah. things play out. It's too hot or it's too hype in a certain area. Now, we still have a lot of growth to come. Vaughn or in York Region or GT condos, yeah. you know, housing. There's lots of space too in the northern ends. But it's still hot. Whereas if you go, if I you know mention to all of my viewers or all of my leads or all my customers and say go two hours away, they're all gonna say, two hours away. You know, I gotta my dad needs to watch the property. It's too far. But that extra 45 minutes of gas and drive could bring you a safety, safer investment, yeah. secure your principal, and possibly more room for growth and appreciation later. Yeah, yeah. again, it, it all de depends on that person's individual circumstances. Of course. I mean, if me personally, if I worked in the city, I'm not gonna drive two hours there back no. in the morning, right? No, but, but it's an again, investment for someone, for, right. not for you to live right. there, for, for you to generate income. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah. I, again, it's looking at the numbers, yeah. making sure it makes sense for what yeah, your needs course, are, yeah. those things are being met, and then having that feeling. How is your mindset, and how do you feel about what you've been hearing or what you've been experiencing? Are you discouraged? Not discouraged at all. Are you disappointed? Are you, maybe you don't have enough savings yet to participate in this 
you know, higher market that you didn't um, anticipate, or the fact that there's not a lot of options? I think it was none of those really okay. dis uh, disappoint. It's more surprised. I thought it would uh, make more sense. I thought it would be easier, perhaps. Okay. So my okay. expectation, I thought it would be lots of things to look at. And, uh, You'd have a lot more options. Yeah, and... uh, but I didn't find that. Um, but it wasn't discouraging. It just means I got to look for somewhere else. The, the vision of you know, or save more money, money or and stuff hasn't changed for me. It's just um, maybe the spot isn't good, so I just look somewhere else. Of course. And that's again, you know, having. Well, that property hasn't come on yet. Hasn't yeah. gone on the market yet. Yeah, I haven't gotten that feeling and and found something that's worked for me at this particular point. In time. So this feeling you're looking for is it for confidence or is it for safety? Is it for assurance of some sort? It's intuition. You, it's intuition. Everyone knows it, how they know their own body yeah. and their, they know their intuition, but it's just like when you, when you buy something, you, you feel good about it. It makes you feel good. Well, why do you wear that jacket? Why do you wear those shoes? Why do you wear anything? When you looked at it, some vibe you got from it made you feel good, so you buy it, okay. right? So uh, I think you can get that uh, and learn to recognize that in yourself. But you should also be able to recognize that, mm, I don't know, this doesn't feel good, or maybe something's off, even though, you know, and I think that's important to have yeah. when you're when you're buying something, you should feel good and have that belief about that, that it's gonna work for you. Because again, getting into the mindset thing is like, the last thing you wanna do is being stressed and second guessing yourself. Yeah. And when you have that intuition of this feels good, then you don't, you don't get that stress. You don't get that second guessing and that feeling of, it's not a good decision. You know, it's, it's and you know when you think that it's not a good decision, and then you keep feeling that, then that also changes to make it not a good decision yeah. because you're projecting out in the world that that's not a good decision. So you're also setting the line. You're setting not it up for exactly, and that's why I feel the feeling part is important, uh, especially. So the, on, on intuition, the just uh, just to uh, share my experience, I had uh, read uh, a couple of things once, and it was on how. Um, it was on how, it was a study, uh, it was Malcolm Gladwell, it's Blink, the book, yeah, book, 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 okay? and he postulated um, how the body arrives, the body can arrive at conclusions before the mind is in there, right? Okay? Yeah. So that's what, sometimes I say, that's what intuition could be. It could be your body arriving at a conclusion before your yes. mind is caught up to why it arrived there. Right. So you're feeling this, you know, it's not the right thing for me, it's not the right. You have this knowledge, and and that's you've kind of already. You're like, Why am I feeling like this? You know, and and that's loose. And then you come to the realization within your consciousness that hey, that was, you know, what that was. that's what that was. Yeah. And you feel that with with all kinds of things. You know, even golfing, we golf a lot. Of time. And and you talked about a lot about subconscious too, so training your subconscious to right. see these positive things and positive views. Um, but it does help to zone out or 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 stay away from the noise that's gonna take up that space in your mind to have those positive thoughts. Because you only have so much space you can focus on them at one time. Right. So they know you do a lot of this training with mind coaching you're talking about yeah. with your application. And um, you know, you have a lot of techniques for kind of influencing or training the subconscious to right. help you consciously project or or achieve what you want. To be in line with your vision. To be in line with yeah, maybe you can expand a little bit on how that works. Yeah, sure. So essentially, you have your conscious mind and your subconscious mind. Everyone's aware of that, uh, but many people don't realize how how they're different and how they work with each other. And essentially, your conscious mind is full of your wishes and desires and aspirations of everything that you want. Um, but then your subconscious mind is basically ninety five percent of the time is operating your body. And if your subconscious beliefs don't line up with your aspirations and desires, that's why you find it very difficult to achieve these things and do this. So uh, essentially what you really want to do is to change your beliefs that you have. And these beliefs come from, generally speaking, uh, from the ages zero to seven. Uh, so influences from others. Well, so from the ages, experience. from the ages zero to seven, you actually haven't even developed your conscious mind, and you're basically in this delta brain frequency okay. where, they, you know, they always say kids soak up things like sponges, right. and this is absolutely true because at that age, you're trying to learn how to fit in with society and with community, and you're doing this by observing everything that's going on, 
and this is how you uh, start to build your perceptions of reality and make decisions and stuff out there. And the part of the problem with that is that when you're zero to seven, you don't even really remember yeah. much of that. And you're not in control of where you're getting these habits and beliefs from. And those people might not have your aspirations and desires at, in mind at that age. So a lot of things that happen is, you know, if you witness, uh, you know, your parents telling you you're not good enough or you can't do this, you start to believe this and then you take that belief into things that you're doing every day and then you feel you're not good enough or you can't achieve that or uh, you know rich people are greedy or rich people are selfish or all these different perceptions and things you have of people uh, change how you make decisions and how you perceive the world and it's very important is to learn what those are and then to break and change those beliefs and essentially become a new person and the way to do that is your subconscious mind is your habitual mind so the way it learns is through repetition and it's almost imagine it like one of those old tape recorders where you just push the record button and it's recording all your experiences in everyday life and essentially is controlling all of your, your breathing, your heart rate, your blood circulation, your digestion, all that stuff you don't have to think about. Right. That's happening naturally. Um, so now imagine something when you learn something. Let's say you play piano. Yeah. When you're first learning the piano, you're looking at this thing and you're like bing, bong, bing, you know, and you're making all these sounds, but nothing makes sense to you. But you play the piano you every day for it. half an hour, yeah. you keep doing this, and now you can. Da -da -da -da. And then eventually you can look up and you're going to have to look at the keys. Same thing with learning to drive a car. You're yeah. first in a car, all these things, buttons, levers, pedals, and it's overwhelming. But then after now, you ever think, you're like, oh my God, I just drove for an hour. How did I get here? I don't yeah. even remember. You know, because when you're in that state and, and you have one of those experiences, your subconscious is essentially taking over and driving the car while your mind is thinking about what you're going to do or right. whatever thoughts that you're having. So the way to change that is through building habits. And essentially we were talking a little bit about earlier, you know, when you get in these bad thoughts, you can say cancel, cancel, cancel. And that's a habit. And that's, you develop this habit to change your mindset and, and how you think because you block out the negative and, and disruptive uh, thought. And then you replace that with something that is in line with your vision. And the best way to do that is through repetition. Uh, the other way to do that is through uh, self-hypnosis, which okay. is there's or hypnotherapy. Okay. Um, now what you can do is essentially uh, in our app, you're able to record your own voice. So they have on YouTube where you can literally uh, listen to all these self 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 hypnosis tapes where they're saying positive affirmations and okay. stuff. And is it like a guided meditation kind of thing? There's guided meditations, but there's also ones for self-hypnosis that okay. are basically saying positive affirmations for things that you may want. Like but I in your own wealthy. voice. Well, my that's the difference with the app. Now you do it that's with your own cool. voice. Yeah, so I've never seen this out there yet. Uh, but one of the cool features of the app, and uh, instead of hearing someone else saying general things, you can specifically tailor it to your own voice and then choose, you know, a few one of the different backing tracks that are calm, relaxing things that help you put to sleep. And just as when you're a child, I mentioned the Delta brain frequency, every day before you go to sleep and as you're waking up, you go into this brain frequency again. And that's kind of the, the feeling where you're kind of like sleeping, but you're still a little bit aware, but dozing off to sleep. Now, when you're listening to this tape and you're talking to yourself, you're programming your subconscious mind with these new beliefs, and you do this over time, and then that's how you start to change your beliefs. That's pretty cool. And then the other third way to do this is there's many different energy healings uh, out there, and one of the ones that I practice is called Psyche, and this is really very interesting because how do you spell this? Uh, psych, like your mind. Psych. Okay. Is P S Y C H. And then K, the letter K. Psych so K, okay. Which is like psych, K stands for key, like key in your mind. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, and then uh, the way this works is essentially 
uh, have you ever heard of muscle testing? No. So muscle like acupuncture. Like, no, muscle testing is a way where you can literally talk to your subconscious mind uh, in the sense that what you do is you can say like a statement. Uh, you hold out your arm, okay. basically, and you'd be like, I am Michael, I am Michael, I am Michael. Now, if you're doing this and I'm doing this to you and you say that, your subconscious where it <coughs> operates your muscle system, right? Uh, and your conscious mind believe that you're Michael because you identify as Michael. Okay. So if I push down on your arm, it'll be strong. I won't be able to push it down. But if you were to say, I am Jeff, I am Jeff, I am Jeff, you know you're not Jeff, so you do this and you'll have a weak. You won't you be able be to as hold it wouldn't be as confident. Be, right. So now you can start to ask yourself, and part of the training and things that I did is like, okay, you might think you have a belief about something and you say, okay, uh, I am an excellent saver. And you do this, and, and you're like, yeah, <laughs> you're like, yeah. please tell me I'm an excellent saver, but it's weak because you don't believe you it. You don't have that belief. You're saying it, but you right. don't believe it. So, or to the core, you, right. you haven't ingrained it in your, in your exactly. mind. Exactly. Your so, your conscious mind might think that, and you can think that, but 95% of the time, it's your subconscious mind that's operating. That's your, pretty cool. Right. So, this is a cool way that you can, they do this with many different uh, things, chiropractors and stuff, and energy healers. But then what we do is, uh, that's just the beginning, is to find these beliefs out. And then we go through a process where, and we can do this online or in person, where we um, help you change those beliefs on a deeper level. And, and that's very important, is once you have those beliefs, then you can, uh, and those align with what your conscious mind wants, which is your aspirations and desires, it makes it a lot easier to attain and, and work, towards. work towards getting that. That's pretty cool. many people, is like, if you have the belief that rich people are greedy or assholes or whatever these things you may have, you're not going to get there because you have a you negative have connotation a, towards these right. people, right? So why would you want to be this person? Right. John P, he has a very famous quote, but you uh, keep your beliefs positive because your beliefs lead to your thoughts, your thoughts lead to your words. Your words it was a unique lead, case. Yeah, your words lead to your actions and your actions lead to your habits and so on and so forth. So if you, this is basically at the, the beginning is to change your beliefs and if you need you have to change your beliefs and make sure they're aligned with what it is that you want, and that will help you achieve what you want. So uh, basically with the app, we kind of tie all this together where we help you build habits, uh, put in your mind what it is that you want. You can uh, book a psyche call with me or one of the other professionals on there uh, to schedule these um, meetings and do this stuff and essentially it, it, it's amazing. So can I include really? this for people to actually go try right now? Absolutely. Okay. I got to do it. I got to put it in there and, and they can actually go get this, a link maybe to go get the application. And, right. And it is a beta, so be cautious. Don't be too harsh on the comments. Yeah. Uh, the reviews, uh, no, welcome, but, uh, but at the end of the day, for me, the app is for, is really to help other people. And I'm encouraging the comments or what, hey, yeah, you, you need that you feedback. Trick, yeah, of course. Trick, yeah. They can make the app improve or improve the app, and that's exactly what I'd love to have uh, because I want to make it, I want to make a tool that can help people stay focused because everything out there is just noise. You got noise. Instagram, you got events, you got this, and, and every other thing the, under the, the sun, reason, and everything is distracting you from yeah, so what it is that you really want. Well, that's the reason why I thought it'd be a good idea for you and I to do this and, and give the value back to some, some of my viewers here yeah. because, you know, Real estate, the perception is, is very negative with real estate agents, okay, or with real estate services in general. Um, you know, we've, I've been challenging the perception since I got into this, and um, they're not very complimenting you know, the beliefs or, or feelings that people have towards us. So, and, and it, it, it can't be me because they haven't met me yet, or some, right. some of them, right? So, it, 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 you know, I'd have to look in deep into myself and say, okay, it's not me because. You know, they must have had a bad experience or just have a perception of experience of real estate or have viewed TV shows because TV shows because I watch TV parents. shows and movies and, you know, it's always the same real estate agent, right? Or yeah. even like, uh, you it's know, even Yellowstone. Car uh, the the last one was Yellowstone. She hates real estate agents yeah, or, or lawyers or, lawyers or um, you know, real estate agents, the guy on the park bench or right. sleazy or the builders always shady or right. always corrupt in a movie. 
Um, so, you know, I guess real estate has that. And that builds their and beliefs, and beliefs and biases and stuff like that. So, you know, I wanted to get, you know, you on here and, and talk about mindset because I believe in that. I'm very big on that in, in positive and ignoring, not ignoring the noise, not listening to the noise. Yeah. Like, leave it out of your life. Um, understand when it is noise and turn it off. Choose to, I'm sorry, you know, this is toxic. Please keep it away from me. Right. I need to focus on what I need to do on my positive thoughts. Now, uh, what advice do you have to say, for example, uh, young people, um, you know, probably 25 to 30 years old or 32 years old, uh, looking to start investing in real estate? Um, and it could be younger, 20 year old, but. Uh, you know, young first time buyers who are actually either looking for an investment or looking to have a place to live in when they, you know, get, want to get out of the house. Sure. Uh, parents only if, they, if that's their understanding. Or, uh, you know, people who are married and want to upgrade or, you know, real estate. How can this, how can um, your application or what, what kind of, uh, you know, little tips can you give them to set them on the right mindset for pursuing uh, real estate. Yeah, absolutely. So, where, where I would start really is, you know, writing down exactly what you want in the house okay. and where you want to live and cost. Uh, yeah, like expense. You no know, more, more, more about, So, visualizing what it is that you want. Okay, that's a good one. Okay. And starting off with that and, and thinking of that every day, every day of what it is that you want out of the house that you want. And I'm a big believer and, and use this in my everyday life and, and know that it's worked for me. There's a lot of study around this that supports this. That There is. And, and supports I, and visualizing the outcome, you know? Right. And I, I've researched this. I've been studying this for the past 20 years. I, I've done this with my own life. You know, I, I set it up in a way that it, like, it's, life didn't just happen to me. I, I chose everything that I wanted. and it's fitting exactly... How I made that happen, of course, you go through the trials and tributes of bad things happening, and bad things happen to everyone, but I always had this vision of what it is that I wanted, and you know, one of the things I did, which was interesting, uh, when I first created uh, a new website, this happened because um, literally my water sports center burned down, somebody burned down all my stuff. All the container. Yeah, so I had all my stuff burned down, and... This was, you know, such a terrible thing, and I basically lost all my stuff and all my savings. I had to go back into building it up again. Uh, but we created a new website, and on the website, I wrote the number one water sports center in the Caribbean. And sure enough, we are the number one water sports center in the Caribbean. But I wrote that at the very beginning before that happened. But that was already in place, and I visualized that, and I saw that happening. And this works for anything, you know, the, the new car or the whatever yeah. it is that you want, the relationships that you want to have with people, you know. Visualize having a great relationship with your wife, a great relationship with your kids, a good relationship, a great relationship with your friends and family. You know, this is important. And if you keep putting that vision into your mind and, and keep having that image of what it is that you want, that is training your subconscious mind to help you make those decisions to then go out and get that that's so permanent in your mind.